Sure. From a company perspective, uh, what sets carbon engineering apart from our competitors is that from the very beginning, we were founded with the focus of delivering cost-effective director capture at a very large scale. So thinking about the size of the, of the climate change problem, you know, how can we build direct air capture units which are big enough to actually make an impact? So uh, you know, our founder, uh, Dr. David Keith, who's a professor at Harvard, recognized from the start that in order to be meaningful, really at a climate relevant scale, you know, where today we're emitting over 40 gigatons of CO2 a year, that's 40 billion tons a year, that we needed to start with really big plants. Um, so starting with a, a megaton scale plant or a million tons per year. And that's really sort of the, the foundation of the company and where we've been entirely focused since the very beginning. The, the challenge of direct air capture is that uh, even though the CO2 in the atmosphere makes a really big difference to the climate, it's still very dilute. There's only 400 parts per million uh, of CO2 uh, in the atmosphere. And to put it in perspective, that means in order to capture 400 tons of CO2, we need to move a million tons of air at least. So you really have to move a lot of air uh, in order to, to capture that CO2. So figuring out how to do that cost effectively is uh, a significant engineering challenge. And that's, that's really sort of the, the focus. The, the, key, um, the key is that we focused on designing a process which uh, allowed us to do uh, some very key things. One is that the process enables us to use uh, uh, units of equipment which have what we call industrial precedent. So it's not that they're necessarily exactly the same as what industry is using today, but there are people using similar equipment that we can leverage those supply chains for. So, so using equipment which is similar to what's, what's used mm -hmm. today. Um, mm -hmm. And the second thing is that, that we use a, li a liquid uh, chemical process. And the advantage of a liquid is that it allows us to scale uh, much easier than other things. And if you think about sort of very large scale uh, operations like a chemical plant uh, okay. or a, a refinery, basically the bigger you make those plants, the greater the economies of scale that you get. So, so those types of processes are very amenable to building at very large scale. So uh, Carbon Engineering's business model is to license our technology to local development partners uh, around the world who would build, own, and operate uh, our facilities. And what's important is this model allows Carbon Engineering, uh, alongside its deployment partners, to deploy DAC technologies as quickly and broadly as possible so it can really start making a meaningful impact on the huge climate challenge. Um, the other advantage of this model is that it enables any country to build facilities uh, that are expected to create uh, many high quality jobs, demand for local materials and equipment, uh, as well as delivering significant emissions reductions in those countries. The furthest advanced uh, we have is uh, in the United States. Uh, we're working with a subsidiary of, of Occidental or Oxy called 1.5 who have licensed our technology in the US and they are in uh, the final stages of what's called the front end engineering and design of a, a plant that will be up to a million tons per year. Uh, and that's expected to um, uh, go to basically start construction this year if you listen to, to their CEO and uh, be operational in 2024. We also have projects, uh, we're working with a partner, Storega, in the United Kingdom, uh, working on a project in Scotland, uh, and we're also working in projects uh, in Norway, and here in Canada, we are working on a, a director capture plus a fuels generation project. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have four that we've announced, and then we're also looking at a number of other places around the world, uh, which we haven't mm -hmm. announced yet. If you kind of look at the, uh, at the long term and you look at what it takes for the world to achieve net zero, the um, people like uh, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, um, things like that, 
estimate that in addition to reducing all our emissions, which is our, our, our first priority as a planet, but we will also need to do a bunch of carbon dioxide removal. Uh, and people estimate, you know, in the neighborhood of five to 10 gigatons of carbon dioxide removal will be needed. And director capture is one of those, those technologies. Right. So um, the, the market to achieve net zero is very significant. And then in addition to achieving net zero, um, by the time we reach net zero, depending on how high the level of CO2 is in the atmosphere, we may want to keep doing more uh, permanent carbon dioxide removal in order to reduce the level of CO2 in the atmosphere back down to a safe level. Um, so uh, as a technology licensor, the, the, our cost information is confidential, um, but what we can look at is the revenue model for these plants. Uh, if you look at the, the first director capture plant to utilize carbon engineering technology is in the US, um, and it's expected and it's to generate expected. approximately $260 per ton in revenue. Uh, and that comes from leading climate policies in the United States, including mm -hmm. uh, the California low carbon fuel standard at about $200 per ton, uh, the federal 45Q tax credit at $35 a ton, and in the case of enhanced oil recovery, also revenue from the commodity value of the CO2 at about $25 a ton. Sure, in terms of bringing down costs as fast as possible, uh, we're confident in our ability to reduce costs, which will really be driven by the, the research and development that we do in our innovation center in Canada, and also from the deployment of multiple plants uh, worldwide uh, and the learnings that we get from those plants. So just as with other growing technology industries like solar and uh, solar power, we expect the rate of cost reduction to accelerate with the rate of deployment, which is why we advocate for DAC plants to be deployed today. Uh, DAC mm -hmm. technology is ready for deployment at large scale, but stronger policy support is needed to ensure DAC deploys quickly and reliably to help meet the climate challenge and, and bring down costs as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So as with, with all climate related technologies, clear and positive policy developments, which encourage and align net zero targets uh, are really what will be most helpful in accelerating key activity in plant deployment. Um, so about this time last year, uh, we announced that Shopify had pre-purchased 10,000 tons. Uh, mm -hmm. And then last fall, uh, BMO pre-purchased uh, 1,000 tons of permanent carbon dioxide removal credits. Uh, we've also had pre-purchase commitments from a number of other companies and also aggregators, people who buy from us and resell uh, to others. And Carbon Engineering set up this pre-purchase program with the goal of supporting our plant developers and the development of the voluntary carbon removal market. Uh, this creates momentum uh, and a path forward uh, in which consumers will directly purchase from plant developers and aggregators sell to organizations directly. Uh, pricing has not been released for these transitions, but I can say that CE offers a very cost-effective solution for direct air capture and permanent <laughs> carbon removal. Yeah, so um, so the the first plant will be up to a million megatons, and and basically uh, the the first uh, part that we're building will be the first half a million ton. Uh, mm -hmm. What's called a train in a, in a plant, and um, that's basically the building block of our future, uh, our future plants. So all of those large scale facilities uh, will be built in, in sort of very large modules, uh, each capable of capturing uh, a half a million tons of, of CO2 each year. Um, mm -hmm. And to, to put it in perspective, um, uh, the, the first plant in the United States, um, uh, once it's complete, it'll basically be hundreds of times larger than any other announced stack facility in the world today. Mm -hmm. um, it will provide a blueprint for us in our global projects um, and really allows, allows us to progress those other large scale projects as quickly as possible. So uh, actually one of the advantages of direct air capture is that because CO2 is evenly distributed in the atmosphere, it doesn't matter where, the, where you locate a direct air capture plant. So the best place to, to put a direct air capture plant is close to the location where CO2 can be safely stored permanently deep underground. 
So the, the first option is to put uh, carbon dioxide back where it came from by storing liquid CO2 in the same geologic formations that have safely stored oil and natural gas for the millions of years that it, it takes for oil and gas to form. Uh, the geologic formations are porous rock. It's, it's not the big caverns you see in your high school textbooks. Uh, it's, it's porous rock, uh, which is capped by impermeable rock layers, which seal in those liquids. So it's a very uh, safe and long-term uh, storage. And these formations have been very well characterized globally by the oil and gas industry. The second option is to store the liquid CO2 in even deeper geologic formations called saline formations, which store very salty water deep underground uh, in rocks similar uh, or with similar properties to oil and gas reservoirs. And people are now starting to characterize these formations as well. Uh, our partner in the United States, uh, Oxy, are industrial leaders in safe and permanent geologic storage of CO2 with our, over 40 years of operational experience. And I would say, yes, uh, the government has a very important role uh, to play in geologic sequestration. It's crucial to support the, the exploration and characterization of safe storage sites and also to act as regulators to verify that projects conform to very stringent criteria that must be met for permanent storage. Sure. Um, oh, actually, one of the benefits of director cap capture technology is that facilities are location independent and can be located uh, almost anywhere. And this means we can build plants in the locations that make the most sense. For example, in locations where there is access to renewable energy to power the technology, or in remote locations where there are appropriate geologic storage sites to permanently store the CO2. Um, carbon dioxide removal needs to be additive. You know, when we energize direct air capture facilities, uh, we expect to do so in a way that doesn't create emissions or consume energy that is needed elsewhere. The best way to achieve this is to have flexibility in how we run our system in locations where there is abundant low carbon energy sources, uh, it likely makes sense to run our system that way. In other locations, uh, we might use other, uh, other forms of uh, other technologies. And ultimately we've developed our technology so that it can take different uh, mixtures of energy sources depending on the particulars of where each facility is built. Uh, we work with local development partners uh, and choose the most appropriate locations to site facilities. Uh, if you're doing director capture and geologic storage, the best place to put them is close to where that geologic storage is. And then that means you don't have to mm. transport the CO2 very far. Right. So one of the challenges of CCUS or CCS is that most of the factories are already located somewhere. And so you might have to either transport CO2 by truck or by, by rail or by pipeline uh, to a storage facility. And with director mm -hmm. capture, you avoid that challenge uh, and you can build them where it makes sense. As long as the sequestration is, uh, potential is there, uh, and I know people are looking at that. Um, uh, yes, certainly, uh, uh, hello to everyone in, in South Korea. Um, we're really excited with sort of the dialogue that's, that's going on and uh, Korea's net zero commitment. And you know, we think that director capture yeah, has a really important role to play in achieving net zero and you know the earlier we can start building plants and start working towards achieving net zero uh, the better the, the planet will be